Hey everyone, it is Ryan from Snowmen and we are at the 22nd Annual Snow and Ice Management Association Trade Show. We're gonna go in and look around and see some of the cool stuff. So this is new. <laughs> this is a lighted marker right here on a snow dog plow. This is interesting because I haven't seen that. I think I've seen, uh, some, there's a brand in Europe that does that, but we're at the uh, boss booth here today and we're gonna go check out some of the things they got on display. And we are here with Mark Klossner from the Boss Snowplow and he's gonna tell us what they got new this year and what they got going on. Well, I appreciate uh, you stopping by the booth. It's been a great show so far, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah I've, I've been, been having fun. Yeah, absolutely, there's a lot of people here and I think you know it was a good winter all across the country so people are excited about it. And you come to a show like this and you want to see the new stuff, right? And that's why we're here. Yeah. So talking about new stuff, right behind us, you could probably see it already. Well, right now you can see some guy's backpack, but um, <laughs> right behind us, one of the products that we're most excited about introducing this year is the Boss version of the Snow Raider. So that is a sidewalk vehicle, as you can see right here. It's a four-wheel drive, kind of zero turn, snow plow brine uh, applicator, and in, if you put the uh, drop spreader on it, a salt applicator as well. So it is a four-foot plow, and it's designed really to replace uh, shovelers. So one of the things that contractors really struggle with across the country is hiring enough people to do the shoveling work of sidewalks. And or as we call them, shovel rats. Shovel rats, that's right, which I love. That's a great phrase, right? But it, it's hard because sidewalks are a real deal for all contractors, right? And um, there aren't, there's a number of different solutions out there. None of them are great. Um, some of them are really pricey. So a vehicle like this, when you're looking at it and you're in that $10,000 to $14,000 range, depending upon how you outfit it, um, a lot of them will say that this vehicle will replace anywhere between three and five shovelers. So they're going this path because they're tired of having to deal with that loss of labor at every snowstorm and having to recruit new shovelers and all that stuff. So you stand on it, you, you turn it basically like a zero turn mower kind of on top and uh, you can plow, salt and brine all in the same pass if you would choose to do that. Um, five gallon bucket holders on the back so you can hold more salt if you want to but that's a productivity increaser. It'll help you go through sidewalks lickety split. Now what's the benefit to this over like a quad that some people are putting plows? Sure, so one of the biggest benefits of this over a quad is its maneuverability. So a quad, you know, yeah, it's about the same width, but when to turn a quad around, you have to, it, it takes a wide swath, right? So you're either having to get all the way to the end on a run or onto a driveway or something like that and turn all the way around. This thing, you can spin it around in one spot. So this is like Winter's version of a ZTR. It is Winter's version of a ZTR, right. It's a small little footprint, fits down any sidewalk. It's easy to transport. You can put it on a trailer or a lot of times the big contractors will have a trailer or a storage shed or something right on the job site and they'll leave them sitting there in stage until the next weather event. So the model that we're looking at and we're standing right here by is a model that has two of our key accessories to it. One is the new drop spreader that's on the front, our exact path 1.5 cubic foot drop spreader. So what that thing is going to do is it's going to allow you to drop uh, material straight down in behind the plow and not on the plow attachment system in a perfect swath that's exactly like within the wheel width of the vehicle, right? And it's all in one pass. It's all in one pass. That's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing. So there's that and then this one also has the five gallon bucket holders on the back that you can see. So you could add, put extra salt back there so when your spreader gets uh, empty. Um, another idea that I heard today. Now, now yep. before we move forward, are all these things, like are they add-ons or is this unit sell like this as a whole? No, so there's there's a couple things on here that we're looking at that are add-ons, right? The base unit that's sitting over there, we can go look at that next. But really what's added on here are the drop spreader, this piece right up here, and the two bucket holders. Everything else that's on here is standard equipment. So the plow is standard, the belly brine tank that's in there is a 20 gallon brine tank, that is standard as well. There's also a broadcast spreader that's available for this thing as well. It sits in the same place, but it sits up a little bit higher, and that's a broadcast spreader. So it's not gonna dial down to that four, four foot to five foot width. It's gonna be a little bit more than that. So people that are doing larger concrete pans in front of like uh, shopping centers and stuff like that, where they don't care about 
a four foot swath. Now, they can put does them it on just it. broadcast forward? Because obviously you wouldn't want yep. it. It's all forward out in front of the plow. You bet. You okay. bet. And the controller for the spreader, either one, all up on the control tower here. The other thing that it has that comes standard with is a hand wand for the brine tank. So if while you're going along with brine in the tank, you have steps to apply it to or something, you can get off and spray it down with the brine and then just attach it back on here. Oh, that's genius. We also have shovel holders that are gonna go in here too, so you could carry a shovel along with you. Yeah. So if you have to pick a spot again, if there's if there's stairs or something, you can grab the shovel and shovel it off and then pop it back on and head down the road with it. Wow, you guys thought of everything. Uh, I hope so. You know, we're, we're, we're trying to build things that are focused on the customer and trying to improve their productivity. And uh, one of the things we know, again, sidewalks are a big deal. And they want something that's going to help them reduce their need for labor, for shovelers, for shovel rats. But um, uh, they're an important part of the industry as well, right? Like there's a, there's a need for both mechanical labor and human labor and everywhere in between. And you still need somebody to run this, you just need less people. You need less people, that's right. That's exactly right. A new model plow from us last year. We're in Grand Rapids and just Grand Rapids, Michigan is really considered like the birthplace of back drag plows, right? So there's a large part of the country that doesn't use these things yet. They kind of look at them and say, hey, maybe we don't get it. But what I can tell you about a back drag plow is the people that have them and operate them swear by them. And if you spend some time operating one of these things, um, you'll see why. The productivity um, versus just a front mounted plow is unbelievable. Um, probably another 50% improvement in productivity over just a front plow. You combine this with a good front plow and you run both of them in a parking lot, and I'll tell you what, you can run circles around anybody that's just running a front plow, no question about it. They're not difficult to use. You get, you get used to checking your mirrors and you can wing this thing out from eight foot, which is where, when it's fully stowed, it's eight feet wide, but you can wing this out to 16 feet wide. So you think about it, on a three quarter ton truck, you have the ability to have a 16 foot wide plow on it. Now, how much pressure down does this have? Uh, I can't remember exactly when I think it's uh, it's it's around probably 800 pounds I think down on down pressure on this one yep okay. yep so and you have the back end of the truck the weight of the truck working with you here so the down pressure is even more effective the, the truck can pull forward very effectively they're, you know they're meant to tow right that's what trucks are built for they're meant to tow trailers and things like that so well, why not tow snow why not tow snow that's exactly right so and in this case, with our with our Drag Pro, you know, it fits into the receiver hitch. We have a replacement receiver hitch that you put on there. It's like a class five hitch. You hook up your electrical, your hydraulic, and everything is contained right on the unit, just like the front plow. You have a controller in the cab, so you could have a controller for your front plow and then a controller for your back plow next to each other, and you get really used to running it. So this is something that I think you're gonna see up and coming in the industry. It's, it's, a, it's an effective tool, that's all there is to it. We have uh, D-Force available now in our DXT V-Plow line. Um, so we're just adding that ability to add that down force or down pressure to our, you know, our flagship uh, V-Plow model. So it's gonna add you know, hundreds of pounds of pressure scraping down to, to improve, excuse me, hundreds of pounds of pressure to improve your scraping performance, like back dragging and stuff like that. Now, what everyone wants to know, the question will be asked, how many pounds of down pressure? Yeah, it's like 350 pounds, I think, right around there, so and that's quite a bit. And remember, the DXT is a heavier plow to begin with. You know, it's a heavier V plow because it has the ability to trip both at the full mold board and with the cutting edge, so it's got some extra components on it. So when you combine that little bit of extra weight with that D-Force capability, the scraping performance is going to be enhanced greatly for it. So, so this is my world as a shovel rat. Ryan got to slobber over all the plows and the equipment, but this is my zone right here. <laughs> this is my caliber. Bosses many different shovels. So we're going to be testing some of these out this coming season. Uh, well, I guess I shouldn't say. In a future season, you'll see us using these. Very excited to try them out. So. We just tried to do an interview with Western. They said there's about five guys, six guys in the Western plow booth, and they said nobody there could do an on-camera interview. They're looking for another guy and he's not around, so. Uh, one over there. Oh, 
I'm not. I am no good at this. <laughs> That's why we have a product manager. That's what we pay him for. <laughs> <laughs> he makes the big dollars. So nobody here is authorized to do TV? Not in this booth right now, no. Okay. All right. If you're your sales team, that sales team should know how to talk to anyone. We're going to go over to Meyer, my second favorite plow brand. We are at the Meyer booth and we are talking with Jason Matson. And we are in front of, you said this is your newest product? This is a brand new Super Blade. It's an expandable wing plow, starts at 8 foot, goes out to 10 and a half feet. Uh, backed by Meyer's five year warranty, the very best in the industry. This thing comes fully assembled, has a, our brand new LED lights that have a heated element in it to keep the snow and ice from freezing up on them. This thing is a tank. How much does this thing weigh? This thing's about 1,175 pounds. That's a mammoth of a plow. It's unbelievable. Now this obviously, this can't go on a regular pickup truck. You're gonna you're going to put that on a three-quarter ton or bigger truck, so a three-quarter ton, one-ton truck. One-ton truck would probably be the ideal truck for that, something like a Ford F-350. Well, definitely some of the things that puts our plow apart from the competition. We've got six trip springs on this blade. Most of the competition's only at four. It's got heavy-duty two-inch. That's a crazy big hydraulic <laughs> ram right Two-inch two by ten-inch angling ram, two-inch by nine-inch lift cylinder. Uh, most of the competition's at inch and a half on the angling ram, inch and three quarter on the lift ram. Uh, so this thing, like I said, it's built like a tank. This is a Super V3. Uh, it's a V plow where you can, each wing can be operated ind independently, so you have infinite amount of uh, movement on how that pl plow can go. It can be straight, it can be in a scoop mode, it can be in a, a V mode. You can have one blade straight and one forward where it's a pushing leading edge. Uh, to kind of push the snow where you want it. And of course it angles left and right. Again, the LED lights enclose the hydraulic unit. Uses our standard operating wiring system, which all these plows have, which is a simplified seven connection, uh, almost plug and play for most vehicles uh, wiring. So it takes a lot of hassling out of tapping into wires and things like that. Our plows also offer the highest ground clearance in the industry. And what is that ground clearance? Usually it varies a little bit from vehicle to vehicle, but usually about nine and a half is the lowest. I'll tell you what, some of the competitors even, they don't have pre-drilled holes in it, so if you want to put a deflector on there, you have to drill the holes out. Right. And as soon as you break the barrier of that powder coat, you know, these, this, this equipment's used in cold, wet, uh, dark environments a lot of times, so as soon as you break that seal, it's going to rust almost immediately and start rusting from inside out. So we're at the Snow X booth and uh, we're going to be talking to Mitch about, this is your newest product? This is our newest product, it's the Helix. Um, what we have is, an, is a brand new uh, full stainless steel frame. We got rid of our old mild steel frames and we have four new models, um, a one and a half cubic yard, a two and a quarter cubic yard, a three and a half and a five. And what we're looking at here is the one and a half cubic yard. And what makes this truly unique is that the inside of the, uh, the system is no longer a shafted auger. It's now what we refer to as the helix. And you can see that there is no uh, inverted V baffle over the top of it. So any material that you put in there is gonna be able to move freely through there um, without any tunneling or any of that kind of uh, uh, problem that would, would cause with any other sort of auger driven um, system. Um, you also see that the um, Helix runs the entire length of this sill in here, and, and, on, and on this particular model, it'll come, it'll come out right into the spinner assembly. So it actually runs through the system up to about this point. So you're not gonna lose any material um, through the back of the hopper. Now, you'll also see that all of our units are cab forward design, so uh, in the past, we had a number of units which would, some were cab forward design, some were not, some were high output, some were not. So we had about eight models, now we have four. And all of them have flip up chutes. Um, you have the ability to use a triple threat. Is that a brake light? This is 
the brake light on the back. That is correct. That's cool. And you also have what we call the triple threat. So what we have mounted on here is a um, pre-wet system. This unit has four 25-gallon tanks on them that can take brine, and it can be used as a pre-wet system where the, where the material would be pre-wet inside this chamber, or it could be used as a direct liquid application system. By just turning the switch, you can now direct all the pre all the liquid brine onto a um, spray system at the bottom. So it's basically multiple, it's a yeah. salter, right? It's, it's a triple threat, so you can use pure granule uh, uh, rock, salt. rock salt. You could also use a uh, pre-wet system where you're uh, getting the, the rock salt wet on the way out, or you can shut it off and just use a direct liquid application for uh, any time before a storm if you want to go out there and, and uh, pre-treat pre the uh, property. So it's, it's and, and again, we're, we have right now four uh, poly hopper models with stainless, they all have stainless steel frame down the road. And by down the road, I mean in, in the fall, we'll also have a full line of stainless steel hoppers. So what you have over here is a five cubic yard model. Okay, so that's the same thing, just... Same thing, just bigger. It has um, six, there's three on each side, 50 gallon tanks. So it's up to 300 gallons of pre-wet brine that you can put on this unit. And this is new this season? This is brand new this season. So one of the issues that um, the, the uh, non-cab forward design units had was everything was solid in the back. And um, when you live in a climate you know, like I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, and you could have a certain time where there's snow one day and then the next day you're, you're you know, cutting grass. So what we've done is we've made this a flip up shoot model. So all you do is you take this pin out and this entire spinner apparatus will flip up across here. And now you have complete access to fork pockets where you can take, you can use your front end loader to take the unit off or you have access to a um, hitch, a trailer hitch. So it's just another way that we made it a little bit more diversified for end users. All right, so we're here at the Fluid Film booth, and tell us about your product. Uh, fluid Film is a rust and corrosion inhibitor, also a penetrant and a lubricant. Uh, the biggest thing that really sets us apart is our product is 100% solvent free, meaning that when you apply it to a metal, it doesn't evaporate, doesn't get gummy, doesn't get tacky on you, so it stays at the same consistency, which makes it extremely long lasting. When you apply it to a metal surface, what it does is it actually soaks into the pores of the metal, leaves a thin film layer behind that doesn't allow any moisture, oxygen, or salt to penetrate it, uh, not allowing it to have the chemical reaction for rust. Even if you have an existing rust on a metal surface, if you apply fluid film to it, it'll actually soak into the rust, get to the clean metal underneath it, and completely stop it from going any further. Uh, as a lubricant, as far as a lubricant goes, the huge advantage is, especially in the snow market, is that it does not freeze in sub-zero temperatures. So you can keep salt spreader chains, augers, any moving components that are exposed uh, from corroding and also keep them moving through the coldest part of winter. So hydraulic disconnects, you name it, as long as it's a moving part or a stagnant part, it can probably use to be coated with fluid film. Uh, a lot of people really like it for the undercoating of their vehicles. You can spray the whole underside of the vehicle on the chassis, inside the frame rails, uh, inside the rocker panels, doors, tailgates, and it prevents those salts and brines from going anywhere. The advantages of a wet coating is that it creeps and migrates, so it gets into pinch welds, tight areas where hard coatings would not get to protect, and that's where all your salts and brines are going. That's where the rust starts and it breeds from there. Um, it's also non-conductive, so you can use it on electrical components. You can use it in battery terminals, electrical connections, things like that. And it's safe for that because it's not going to spread that electrical connection. Can you eat it? No, you cannot. It is non-hazardous, non-toxic, so you don't have to worry about getting it on your hands or anything like that. But I wouldn't eat it. It's actually made from sheep's wool wax, which is lanolin. Lanol. Yeah, yeah, it's sheep's wool wax. Uh, and that's why it's non-hazardous, non-toxic. Uh, but it won't burn any greenery either. Uh, you know, so it's great for landscaping equipment also uh, in the summertime.
Are you aware of there's a song out there on YouTube about fluid foam? I am aware of it. I've listened to it a couple times and uh, it, 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 it sometimes gets stuck in my head, so. Okay, everyone, we are here uh, at the Plow Flowmaster booth with Dave from Plow Flowmaster. How are you doing? I'm doing excellent. How's the show been going today? You know, really well. We're enjoying being here, shaking hands, meeting people. It's been wonderful. Okay, so tell us a little bit about your product. We specialize in snowplow overheating. I know it doesn't happen to everyone, but it happens to a lot of guys, and we're here to help them solve that problem. So tell us the basic concept. Show us a little bit what you got. For where does it mount? Right on top of the plow. Okay, on the mow you, board. On the mow board, you can mount it on top. You can mount it behind. And it, it's multiple universal application with these extension brackets. It can be moved. It's interesting that most applications, when the plow is installed, it looks similar to this on the front of the plow. And then some of them are like this. Every application is different, but that's why it's universal. It's, it's, a, a, it's an easy fit. Okay. And the basic concept is? What we do is we break the vacuum behind the plow that is created by the plow being on front of the truck. The faster you go, the stronger the vacuum. And when you're moving about town from job to job, because our jobs are further apart now. We have to get on the road to move around. And what this does is the faster you go, it breaks that vacuum that draws the air backwards out of the radiator and allows free air to the radiator. Okay, so if somebody's interested in your product, what can they do to find you guys? Go to our website, plowflowmaster.com, and there's multiple choices. Uh, between the Hurricane Series for V-plows and the Cyclone Series for straight plows. And we also, not an exact match, but we we have red for the Western and Boss and yellow for Snow X and Fisher and Meyer. And, and uh, we also have the stainless steel that is uh, works well with the uh, stainless steel plows that are out today now.